2014, Level 2 Mechanics, Question 3. Shamilla drives to the gym. Shamilla and her car have a combined mass of 1,100 kilograms. She's driving at a constant velocity, so A equals zero. Uh, calculate the size of the vertical force the road produces on the car. So uh, horizontally, driving constant velocity, um, we don't even need to consider the horizontal forces. We're only interested in the vertical force the road produces on the car little diagram might help, brick on wheels. We've got the force due to gravity of the car, and then there's some sort of reaction force. Um, the vertical force of road producing on the car that's pushing upwards through the wheels. We don't need to go individually through each of the wheels, but there's just one force balancing out that force due to gravity. We know it's balancing out, that the net force is zero vertically, because there is no vertical acceleration. So constant velocity applies to horizontal, but we can also um, reasonably assume that vertically it's the case. So we just need to do mg um, to find the reaction force, um, and it's going to be acting, acting in an upward direction, as my diagram has shown. Uh, so 1100 times 9.81 equals, you can work that out, whatever that is. Um, B. Schmiller says that even though the car is moving, it is in equilibrium. Explain what this statement means. Equilibrium means that um, all the forces, the net force, is zero. So the forces, all of the forces are balanced, and the the torque is also zero. Um, so that you have no acceleration in a in a vertical or horizontal or um, well. We don't worry this year so much about it, but in a rotational sense either. Okay, so that's what equilibrium means. All of the forces are balanced. Um, and you can explain the implications of that a little bit, which is where you get into the explain. C, a short time later, uh, Schmiller's car accelerates from a speed of 2.0 metres per second, that's VI, to a speed of 22.0 metres per second, that's VF, covering a distance D of 72 metres. Uh, calculate the size of the average net force on the car while it accelerates. So average net force comes from F equals MA. We know M, which is that 1,100 kilograms. We don't know A, so if we're trying to find A, and we have VF, we have VI, we have D, um, we can use a kinematic equation. Uh, what have we got? Uh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Um, so we can uh, rearrange that for A, plug the values in for V, F, V, I and D, um, and we'll get our value of A. And then once we've got our value for A, we can throw it into the equation up there, and then we've got our value for F. And don't forget the final thing that has to do with the Newtons, which is the unit. Um, in terms of significant figures, uh, you have two significant figures here, two significant figures here, three significant figures here. You're limited by the lowest number of significant figures when you're multiplying and dividing. There are multiplications and divisions squared um, when you rearrange it. So you would go for 2SF for your final. D. Is this the last one? I think it's the last one. Oh, there are four questions. Didn't know there were four questions. D. Uh, Shamila drives her car, sorry about all the moving, at a constant speed around a corner. Constant speed means you're not accelerating in, in that that just that speed, that non-vector aspect is clearly changing direction, which means, because it's going around a corner, which means it's changing its velocity, but a constant speed carrying on. And then drives over some ice, so you know there's going to be some slipping, as shown on the diagram below. You can assume there is no friction between the ice and the tyres. Describe the net force on the car, if any, before and after she reaches the ice. Before, this is just a description, it's not an explanation. So you've got a centripetal force, um, which is greater than zero. Um, unbalanced, so the net force is equal to the centripetal force, as before the ice, um, and that's causing the circular motion. Um, after the ice, um, there is, so you hit the ice or however it goes, going to carry off in a straight line because there's no friction. This is your, um, your, your velocity now. So in terms of the forces, you're removing that centripetal force, so your net force is now zero. There are no uh, forces, um, there's no net force on the car afterwards, so it just carries off in a straight line without changing direction, without changing velocity. Okay. 
Next part, explain how the net force of any affects the motion of the car before and after she reaches the ice. So we've sort of talked about that initially. Um, you've got the net force causing it to turn in a circle. And then afterwards, um, you've got no net force, so it's constant motion. Constant motion um, with no changes in anything. 2014 Mechanics Question 4, Level 2. Schmiller's driving home. Um, same car as the Question 3, 1100 kilograms. Calculate the total momentum of the car uh, when the car has a velocity of 18 metres per second. Um, so momentum is mass times velocity, that mass, that velocity, and a correct unit is going to be kilogram meters per second, kilogram from the mass, meters per second from the velocity. Okay, B, calculate the size and direction of the momentum change of the car as it slows from there to there. Okay, going along in a straight line, so we've got our initial momentum, and then we've got a final momentum. So the um, change is the size and direction of the momentum change. So change in momentum is um, uh, final minus the initial. Um, clearly we can see the initial is going to be um, higher than the final, so we're going to end up with a negative answer. Um, and the, the negative answer indicates that the direction, because it wants you to give the, um, the size and the direction, the direction with the negative means it's going in the opposite direction to which the car was originally going. So opposite to start direction, start D, there we go. Um, in terms of the calculations, um, it's mass times velocity um, minus mass times velocity. So 18 times, um, times the mass minus uh, 11 times the mass. You can do that calculation yourself to find that value. It's all in a straight line. Okay, so we don't need to worry about um, any directions uh, to do with vectors and things. It's all in a straight line, um, which is a fair assumption anyway. Moving on C, uh, Schmidt puts a foot on the brake and the car slows down. Explain the principle of energy conservation in this situation. And identify the transfer of energy caused by braking. Um, so energy is always conserved. Um, it only, uh, maybe we should write that out. E is always conserved, it uh, changes form, um, so you don't create it or destroy it. Um, and in this situation, um, it's going to be applied by the kinetic energy of the car, is then going to be converted to heat in the brakes due to friction. Oops, due to friction. Okay, um, and that heat is going to dissipate to the air and it's going to conduct and radiate away. But in terms of specific energy conservation, um, we're, we're talking about that kinetic energy being converted to heat. You're removing the energy somehow to slow it down. Um, in a closed system, you might have energy going in and out of the system, but uh, you will overall not lose any energy from the universe. Let's put it that way. Uh, D, calculate the average rate at which the brakes transfer energy. Uh, as the car slows from that velocity. Um, so we're talking about the energy uh, over time, which is the power, and we're going to have to calculate the energy, kinetic energy. Yeah, so the kinetic energy initially um, minus the final kinetic energy over that time. So if we were to write this as a full equation, the power will be the change of energy over the time which is um, EK initial minus, uh, sorry, EKF final minus the EK initial divided by the time. So kinetic energy, half MV squared. You do that twice for, you've got the mass, 1100 kilograms, and each of those two velocities, 11 and 18. Um, you do those calculations, put them in to each of those positions, get a change in energy, and then just put in the time. That will give you the power, which is the average rate at which the brakes are transferring energy. Assuming all of that energy from the kinetic energy is going into the um, heat in the brakes. And now I think we're, we're done. That's just redrawing diagrams.